All right, let's give a general formula for the trig equation sine of theta is equal to one half. So we need to first figure out where is sine positive. We do that with our salty sea chart. This tells us that sine is positive in the first quadrant and sine is positive in the second quadrant. So that means there are uh, there's an angle measure here in the first quadrant and there's an angle measure here in the second quadrant so that if I took the sine of it I would get a positive one half. All right. The reference angle is what? The sine of what is a positive one half in the first quadrant? Pi over six. Now, if I want the angle measure in the second quadrant, I use the formula pi minus theta. So pi minus pi over six. So I'd have to get a common denominator. Well, one pi is the same as six pi over six. So six pi over six minus one pi over six, that's five pi over six. All right, so my two answers, if I didn't want a general formula, my two answers would just be pi over six and five pi over six. But since I want a general formula, list those two. So I'm gonna say theta equals pi over six and theta equals five pi over six. And now remember that the trig functions are periodic. Sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant repeat every two pi. So if I wanted to create a formula that would generate an infinite number of answers, then I'd say plus two k pi. It's plus two pi, but we put a K in there so that we could say K is any integer. So it can be any integer. That means that I can plug in a negative one. That'll give me an angle measure that will lie in the same position as pi over six. I could plug in a zero. That would give me my two angle measures that I come up with at first. I could plug in a one. That brings me one complete revolution around, two pi radians around. So you can plug in any integer and that would give you a set of answers or a set of angle measures that if you took the sign of them, you would get a positive one half. 